Gentleman from New York yields back, and the chair now recognizes yet another gentleman from New York, Mr. Lawler, for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, like many of my colleagues here today, I have serious concerns about the potential consequences of focusing on costly non-material environmental, social, and political issues at the expense of sound financial policies. What we're seeing in this press from both government regulation and shareholder activism driving up the costs and burdens associated with participating in the United States public markets, and it detracts from companies being able to raise capital and foster economic growth. Instead of focusing on running their businesses, we see companies having to spend their time and resources addressing politically motivated proposals that don't have anything to do with the company's strategic direction or long-term goals. My home state of New York has been at the forefront of promoting ESG policies. Back in 2019, New York State Comptroller Tom DiNapoli released guidelines on how the Common Retirement Fund would begin to pursue ESG goals with a new climate action plan, for instance. We've seen the Common Retirement Fund repeatedly filing shareholder proposals and pressing public companies to adopt these policies. This is not just some random shareholder. This is an elected official using his perch to drive companies to make decisions. That is not democracy, not even close. Over the past years, this fund alone has filed hundreds of proposals, and many companies have chosen just to settle and cut a deal, leading more reports and disclosures and diverted resources. Now, this is the same pension fund, by the way, that just announced a negative return of 4.1% for the state fiscal year that just ended. Bang up job. Doing real good by the taxpayers. Because, by the way, in New York, the taxpayers are on the hook when we don't meet our requirements. Several pension funds in New York City are actually even now facing lawsuits alleging that they have breached their fiduciary duty. Yeah, this is really working out great. Good policies. Now, we've seen a lot of examples recently, and I hear it from my constituents. People want corporations to leave politics at home and focus on the underlying purpose at hand of running their businesses, selling their products, and delivering a return for their investors. Stay the hell out of politics. Leave it to Congress. Leave it to state legislatures. There's plenty of politics around here at all times. The American people are so tired of politics consuming everything, from the media to corporate America to education. It's pathetic. And it is creating a challenge across the board. Mr. Berry, do you agree that politics and social policy should be made in Congress and state legislatures and not in corporate boardrooms? This is what Congress and legislatures are for, Congressman. Mm. I agree. Mr. Natram, shareholders who submit proposals, especially on environmental and social topics, often argue that these proposals serve the long-term economic interests of companies and shareholders. Could you respond to this claim? I would say that the long-term economic interest of shareholders are best focused, uh, are, are best served when companies focus on their underlying business itself. So would you agree that if, for instance, the New York State Pension Fund is uh, giving a negative return, that's probably not in the best interest of uh, pension fund recipients? Without knowing much about the New York City Pension Fund, those, those don't sound like great facts, sir. Makes sense. Uh, Dr. White, can you speak about the prevalence and persistence of socially oriented shareholder activism and the influence of proxy advisory firms uh, affect uh, shareholder value and the ability of corporations to make efficient and effective business decisions? Yeah, thank you. Um, I, I've heard a lot of discussions today about it maybe taking one hour to respond uh, <laughs> to shareholders. Um, I can tell you that's not, uh, you would get a low grade in my class if you submitted that as a response. Um, you have to carefully consider each proposal, potentially negotiate with the special interests, 
request relief from the SEC, which they reject more than 50% of that, or now in reply if they fail to provide relief. Amazon spent 116 pages and 40,000 words, which would take the average investor two hours to read. So I doubt it would take you one hour to respond if it takes you two hours to read, and it was very politicized. Thank you. I yield back.